Hi, my name is Jay Descarte, and I'm going to be talking about Emily Willis. Now, before I start, I do want to make sure that we're sending out our prayers for her. And I want to make sure that we just got the best energy, good vibes, sending it her, her way. I know there's a lot of fake news out there, people saying the worst. And I just wanted to give an opinion about what might have caused this but nothing i say here is fact everything i'm saying here is just circumstantial evidence something that i deal with on a daily basis for my regular job in the case of emily willis from what i'm seeing is that she doesn't have like you know i've been researching and looking for stuff and i noticed she doesn't have a look she doesn't have a look of a uh, someone who you uses drugs and i'm not saying that everyone who uses drugs has a look but there's usually something that tells all given the situation that she was in from what i read in the reports of the limited knowledge that i can get from any report that's online right now apparently she was at a rehab right in malibu and this rehab facility is for celebrity and somehow she overdosed at rehab this sounds familiar doesn't it i talked about this before if you haven't seen that video right here and the last thing is just contraband there's drugs inside the rehab this is why rehab doesn't work thank you so now that you've seen that I've been saying this for a long time that rehab is not really the answer for everybody. Rehab's the answer for many people, but not everyone. Rehab can kill you. Believe it or not, people think, oh, just throw them in rehab, they'll be all right. That's not true. Not true. A lot of times you don't know. You don't know what that person is going through. You don't know what drugs they're on. You don't know what prescription medications they're on. You don't know. Like, you can literally throw them in there and that will be the end of them because maybe they don't have their medication or something. I feel like we're leaning towards a mixture of either alcohol or prescription pills. And. Like, I don't know what pills, all right? I don't know what she's on. I don't know. But I, I know the situation or, like, the way that she's, her condition right now that she's in is possibly due to poly use. She's on different medications or different drugs or she mixed drugs. And you don't want to mix a depressant like an opioid. Because that like makes you breathe really shallow with Xanax. Those two together are like lethal. I'm not saying if you do it, you're going to die. But I mean, high doses of it, there's a likely chance something bad might happen. Because Xanax, you know, makes you relax. So it, it kind of does something to your breathing too, but not too much. But the opioids, like those Oxycontins and stuff... Those things can really make you stop breathing because it just relaxes you too much. Like, you know, feel too good. Now, does she look like someone that's a pill popper? Is she someone that fits the category of someone who uses opioids? That's the thing that's amazing to me is that she doesn't have the look because she's very like she's very lively. Like, people who have, like, a drug problem, a real drug problem, they're not lively. And I, I don't know, I haven't seen, I've never seen her in person, so this is only speculation as well. But, like, when I see her in, like, YouTube videos, she's very bright. And when someone comes off like that, unless she's acting, I'm assuming she's not. But then, that's why I'm I'm trying to say... She looks like someone who doesn't have a drug problem. And so because they call this an overdose, I don't want to say it necessarily means she has a drug problem. 
Uh, same thing with like her being at rehab. That doesn't necessarily mean she has a drug problem. It doesn't mean she's an addict. It could mean she's she's probably on medication and she's going through like you know. Have you ever watched a drug commercial? Kara, what's wrong? They're after me. They're all after me. Sounds like you need Xanax. What's Xanax? Well, it's a drug used to treat anxiety and panic disorders. How does it work? It increases the action of the neurotransmitter GABA in the brain, which then slows down the action of the brain, thus making you happy and calm. Where do I get it? Can I go to Walmart and get it? Well, you can't just go to any store. You have to go to your doctor and ask about how it can help you. Okay. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Elderly dementia patients taking Abilify have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor if you have high fever, stiff muscles, and confusion. Two drugs are possible like for any condition, or if you uncontrolled muscle movements. Essie's food with High blood sugars are reported with Abilify medicines like it, and extreme cases can lead to more death. Other risks include increased cholesterol, weight gain, decreases in light blood cells, which can be serious, dizziness on standing, seizures, trouble swallowing, and impaired judgment over skills. Depression was always hanging over me. Then my doctor tried to Abilify my antidepressant. Now I feel better. If you are still struggling with depression, help your doctor to see the option that Abilify is right for you, and be sure to ask about the free trial. Watch any drug commercial, and then you'll see like the whole commercial is like something cheesy, and like this can do it for you. Yeah. Just take one of these a day and everything will be fine. Life will be great. You'll be seeing colors again. Yeah, life it will be great. You just need to take this pill. Ask your doctor about it. Ask your doctor to get you a prescription and live life again, right? That's how the, the commercial goes. And then at the end it goes, can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Elderly dementia patients taking the two have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor if you have fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, as these may be signs of a life-threatening reaction, or if you have uncontrollable muscle movements, as these may become permanent. High blood sugar has been reported with Latuda and medicines like it, and in some cases, extreme high blood sugar can lead to coma or death. Other risks include decreases in white blood cells, which can be fatal, dizziness upon standing, seizures, increased cholesterol, weight gain, increased prolactin levels, impairment in judgment, or trouble swallowing. Avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice while taking Latuda. Use caution before driving or operating machinery. There are paths to treat bipolar depression. Ask your doctor if once a day Latuda for bipolar depression is right for you. For savings options, visit Latuda.com. It's Prescription pills are like the craziest freaking drugs. People talk about like meth being crazy, heroin being crazy. Bruh, prescription drugs are crazy. Forget what they told you. It's prescription drugs that are the craziest. Think about it. What's the craziest drug right now? Fentanyl. What is fentanyl? It's a prescription medication. I'm telling you. As a lot of people think, oh, we got to get this meth out of our streets. But you don't even know. The most dangerous drugs are actually next to you. Literally, CVS, the most dangerous drugs are all over the place. Legal. Perfectly legal. Probably locked behind some kind of safe. But the most dangerous drugs are actually readily available to you as long as you have a prescription for them. To be honest. Even if you just take Xanax alone, if you take Xanax alone and then you abruptly stop, you can die. And what I mean by that is not just die as in like, bleh, like you don't just die. I mean like you can have a seizure. You can have like, uh, does they have this thing called like, like uh, electric shocks? Yeah, it's kind of hard to to explain, but they you get these little shocks in your brain. And you like temporarily pause for a second. You fucking freeze up. Like, yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's crucial to stress the importance of supervised tapering when discontinuing medications, especially those like benzodiazepines, which is like Xanax, Clonopin, uh, Ativan, Lorazepam. Those are all the same. I just said they're generic in their trade name. As well as opioids. Opioids are crazy. This is Oxycontin. You could say lean. Promethazine code with with code if it has actually no not lean. Codeine. So if it's codeine, morphine, anything that has that ene. Not all of them, but you know. So there's a hydrocodon, that's Vicodin. So those are like your more addictive medications. And because your body gets used to it, what happens is it shuts down certain functions of your body. And so, like, I only know from experience with Xanax, 
what happens to me like if i when i i mean like when i tried to stop xanax i had a seizure right away i i cold turkey for like a day or two and then the third day i had a full-on seizure don't know anything about it and i almost crashed i was driving at the time and i almost crashed I did crash, and um, but I almost killed me, my two friends, and the car in front of us. That's how crazy it is. And I woke up in the hospital like, what happened? What happened, guys? You know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? I had no clue what happened, to be honest. So that's crazy, right? If pills can do something like that, just think about it. They said that she overdosed, which is... Um, I don't think it's a proper term, but I don't think they they had any other term to use because there's like a there isn't no word to describe what she's going through other than you can you can say other than overdose or you can say um accidental overdose. I think that's what it more is likely because if she was if she was on listen to me, right? She was already at rehab. So a lot of people say, how did she get high at rehab? Like, that's easy. There's drugs inside rehab. That's a given. Anybody who's been to rehab knows there's drugs inside rehab. Sometimes or right, you're gonna you're gonna get some real news right now. Sometimes if you're a new drug dealer, right? Let's just say you moved into a new city a new town or a new state right and you sell drugs you don't know you don't have any customers right you have no customers how do you make customers how do you find who's using drugs how do you get into the circle you go to rehab believe it or not sometimes the people at rehab are the drug dealers not the drug lords. I'm talking about your street level dealer. The ones who deal with you directly. They will go to rehab sometimes. So they can meet people. And when they meet people, they get customers. And that's why rehab doesn't work. Because you don't know who's really in there. Because they want to be in there. Or who's in there because they have a hidden agenda. So... Let's just say maybe she was at rehab, right? For let's say like she got let's say she was on pres you know, prescription pills and she's tapering off safely, right? Let's just say like her body's like cutting down on it. If somebody came into that rehab, right? And offered her, Hey, you know, I snuck some in, you want some? This is a problem. Believe it or not. If you're inside rehab, there's nothing more that you want than drugs and when opportunity is like hey you want you want i got some drugs you think they're gonna say no it's so hard because we, we already don't want to be there and we're probably feeling like shit our body's shutting down we feel like we're gonna crash like i'm gonna die if i don't have that medicine right there and so what happens is your body is already working on cleaning you out of that drug. And so you might, you know, somebody comes into the facility and somehow you, now you have access to the drug that that you like. And so let's say you, your, your, your tolerance was so high before you used to take like three pills at a time, like nothing, because it, it was not a problem. My tolerance was, was high, right? But if you take it, let's just say you you taper, you got off for, for a week or two, and then, um, you know, somehow you get your hands on it, and you're just like, pop three or something. Yeah, that's going to cost an overdose. Even if, like, you know, you always pop three, like, bruh, I've been doing this forever. It's just that you don't understand. Like, your body is no longer, your body is starting to learn how to work by itself again. Because you stop using that for two weeks or something, you know what I mean? I mean, usually it takes it takes like years to get off medication. They say when you're on something, like say you're on medication for one whole year, then it's gonna take a whole year to get off the medication because you're gonna have to cut it down little by little. So your body 
learns to work with your tolerance so like you know instead of you know what i mean like you're working through it so that your body can start to activate and start to work normally than when you were taking so much of the amount of drugs when the body shut down because it's like oh we don't need to work anymore because you're you're already mate you're already creating what you need i i can explain this better with stimulants because when you use like cocaine right one line you're you know what your freaking neurotransmitters are just like shooting out like crazy and like you have like a reserve of dopamine and whatever all those things you have a reserve and so when you use coke or any stimulant actually when you use any drug as long as it makes you feel happy for a second or good that all of that comes out yeah that's why they say like taking beta blockers and stuff might might help you if you have like addiction to something because it will just close up the synapse the synapse and like basically the drug will come out and it'll just bounce off because the synapse is closed but that can also be bad too because then you you might fall into a really depressive state which is what happens with people who are addicted to stimulants because they've been firing their do- their dopamine too much what happens is the neurotransmitter stops accepting or it stops creating its own dopamine because like basically it doesn't need to work on its own anymore because it's been getting helped all this time the way your body is is very crazy right when you keep taking the drug what's going on with you and that was like fixing you naturally it just shuts down it's a crazy thing like i always thought about it it's a crazy thing that how drugs work but yeah just know i just want you to know if you're on any medication don't abruptly stop and if you want to just talk to your doctor first just tell your doctor i want to get off of this i'm not going another day then talk to your doctor and make sure he's there and so he can tell you what to do next like maybe he might give you something else so that you can get through the withdrawal if it's possible or maybe he might bring you to a specialist or something where you might need other kinds of help but just make sure that like even if you just go to rehab like, even if you're checking into rehab make sure you know yourself make sure you know like if you're on medication that you know like you you don't want to be without the medication because you might have a seizure sudden death you know what i mean stop uh going to a coma it could happen and you know what i mean like you could be in your best interest too like, you can be like extremely honest and you could be saying like i really want to stop this stuff like, i don't want to do this anymore right you could be in that i mean don't get me wrong you could be there but your body is different there's a verse in the bible that goes like the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak it's a bible verse matthew 26 41 that's uh, so true your spirit can always be willing you can always tell yourself i'm gonna stop using drugs i'm gonna get clean yeah but then you forgot your body is different your body needs the drugs you might not think you need it psychologically anymore but physiologically your body needs the drugs because you've been taking this for so long that the normal the normal guys who work in this body they don't they went on vacation (laughs) you know your body went on vacation because it didn't need we ran out of jobs you know (laughs) that's pretty much what happens there's no jobs inside your cells and stuff there was no jobs available the drug was providing everything and it was like a ai basically it took over the jobs of the, your natural human functions and that's the crazy part about drugs and so i just want to like you know i really want to express that like we need to look out for each other we need to be more understanding to each other we need to love each other even if you know someone 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 you despise right someone even like people you think like you you absolutely hate because 
maybe their addiction did something to you. Maybe they stole from you. Maybe they... And uh, hold on, let me pause right there. Addiction and stealing are not the same thing, right? People who steal when they're high or when they use drugs, they still they they just steal. That's the thing. They just steal. And I'm not saying that like, I'm not saying like freaking it's because of their addiction. No, if you steal, then you just steal. That's who you are. Because I'm tired of people saying drug addicts steal. Like motherfucker, no, I never steal. That's one thing. That's like my mom always told me. Like, don't ever steal because you know how it feels, right? Like, how, like you know when someone st- stole your bike, how did you feel? You know, I'm sad. Do, do you want someone to be sad? Of course not. I know. Like, I'm not no Ten Commandments, living by the book kind of person. But you have to have more of moral thresholds. Nah, I don't do that. I mean, because of our love and fear are very similar in, in this case. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? And of course, Emily Willis is still a human being like at, the end, at the end of the day. So all we can do is wish the best for her, send her prayers. And yeah, pray for yourself too. Pray for those people that are going through addiction in your life. And pray that you can do something to help them. Because you don't know how much you can do just by being supportive to them. I'm not saying go buy them things. I'm not saying be nice to them like you. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying just talk to them. Treat them like a human being. You know what I mean? Just don't don't always don't always charge at them like they did something wrong. You know, sometimes it takes a lot more than that. Like you, you a lot of people are just not really educated in this, you know, or they just don't have it in them. And that's, you know, I can't say, I can't fix narcissism. If you're a narcissist, you're going to be like that no matter what. But if you are not a narcissist, then understand that someone who's using drugs is not necessarily a bad person, not necessarily someone who needs to get hell for shit that they do. And they don't even know why they get high, right? Maybe they get high because they feel lonely. And maybe you guys are not on the same level where you guys are comfortable speaking about such touchy subjects. And that's why they feel even more lonely. And that's why they use drugs just so they can can just feel less lonely, you know? They can feel like, oh, you know what? Everything doesn't feel so loud right now. Because that's what it feels like when you're when you're getting sober. When you're going back to not using drugs, it feels like all these voices are coming back to you, like yelling, yelling, yelling. Go like, oh, use, you know, what are you doing with yourself? Just use the drug. What the fuck? What are you doing with your life? You're already a failure. What the hell? You think you're gonna make it? You think you're gonna do better? What the hell? Yeah, I'm not saying they're not physical voices, but like, I mean, they're not also they're also not auditory. If they're auditory, then you like, you know, you might need to get that check. Just saying, but um. You know, you just have these intrusive thoughts, basically, like, telling you, like, no, dude, you should just stop trying to, like, give up, dude. You're going to be honest forever. You need me. What are you going to do if you don't if you don't have me? You're going to go crazy. That's what the drug makes. That's what drugs do. And so when you're talking to somebody who has a, a drug problem and you know it, try to be a little bit more compassionate. That's all I can ask for. They might not ask you, but I'm asking you. Try to have a little bit more compassion for them. And it might mean the world to them. And it might even cause them to change. Because that's probably what's been missing this whole time.